The first step is to become aware that edged weapon attacks often occur in unlikely situations, often when you're distracted or not expecting them at all. Police department! Thorny? Jim Thorny? Thorny, I got a warrant for you. I know you're in there. Come on to the door. Thorny, open up. The use of the unexpected is a favorite tactic of edged weapon offenders. I told you three times to stop by on the customer. This time you're going to jail. Why don't you leave me alone, man? Why don't you back off? No, this time you're going to jail. You're too close. Some survivors have found this out the hard way. The basic perception if you get into a knife attack is there's going to be one single thrust. You're going to clean... Do you consider that a violator may have rigged up a scabbard in the armrest? allowing him to quickly arm himself, or that he may reach toward you with a driver's license that he's altered with a razor blade taped to the back. Even a common item, like an ice scraper, given the right offender and motivation, can suddenly become an edged weapon you may not be expecting. Keep them out. Nice and cool. Moving in for an arrest, you're necessarily cool. close. Be nice. Okay, come on, stand up, okay? Come on, stand up. Without good tactics, you make yourself vulnerable to an incredible array of edged weapons. Just a sampling of what's available is indicated by these knives recovered by courtroom officers. And these weapons, taken from a search of students at a public school. Of course you're aware of the ballet song, or butterfly knife, whose folding handle aids in concealment. And you've probably seen a knife that looks like a ballpoint pen. But are you familiar with the Mexican sacatripe, used for gutting sheep and other warm-blooded animals? Or the butane lighter holder that conceals a push knife in back? Or the bracelet that pulls open into a knife? This commercially available rig gives an offender ready access to throwing darts hidden up his sleeve. This kind of money clip has more of a point to it than just holding cash. And a carrier like this, easily hidden under a shirt, can quickly arm a suspect with this wicked weapon. Tonto knives, among the deadliest fighting knives, have incredible penetration capability because of their special blade configuration. Plus, they can be used to crush a human skull. The ballistic knife can either be used for conventional slashes or stabs, or fired with deadly results by a powerful spring in the handle. There's also hidden danger in this lipstick tube, popular with prostitutes. Also sold on the open market is this key that opens into a knife, and this bear claw necklace. Adding to the threat are a host of improvised weapons, Sunglasses that can be flicked to poke out your eyes. Fish hooks hidden in earrings or stuck through pant legs to rip your fingers on a pat-down. Boots with protruding spikes. A baseball cap with razor blades sewn to the back, which can be swung by the bill to cut your face. Even something like this mace, made by a teenager with lead and spikes in his workshop. Yet it's easy to forget the possibility of being confronted by one of these isn't it? Have you ever turned your back on a suspect because you assumed he was unarmed? How many times have you allowed an unsecured arrestee to put his hands within easy reach of a pocket that might contain a weapon? Have you ever noticed how some officers drop their gaze and never tap into folded hands as a danger cue, or enter the inside position directly in front of an offender in the area he can control with his hands and arms? And how often have you seen or used the wall search? Which any suspect can defeat with practice. What's hard to imagine, unless you've already been a knife victim, is the speed with which attacks can occur. Switchblades and gravity blades can be drawn and used instantly. 
Folding blades like buck knives can be locked in place when drawn, even with one hand. Watch how fast someone who's really skilled can get into action with a knife. And concealment can be almost anywhere. Sometimes, poor tactics give an unarmed offender access to an officer's duty knife. Your escort procedures make sure it stays secure. Okay, let's go to the car. Hey! Come on! What you're looking at is something you've never seen before, but you've heard about. Inmates in a maximum security prison practicing their edged weapon skills. This is one training ground for the group that lives at the very heart of the knife culture and is ready to take you on. Hardcore criminal offenders. They go to great lengths to develop the deadly talents their career survival depends on. They have the training. They have the interest. And sooner or later, they get good in the ways they train. With the use of an extreme telephoto lens, you can see close up how they practice in small groups, usually with several lookouts. They use toothbrushes or pencils to simulate knives. But there's nothing pretend about their goal. Some of the weapons are crudely constructed from makeshift materials, razor blades taped to toothbrushes, or hidden in match packs, or melted into pens. A safety pin straightened out and sharpened, pieces of plexiglass or metal wrapped with cloth for a handle, or tied to a cutting edge that can be swung. But prisoners with access to metal shops can produce more sophisticated edged weapons, like these. Prison gangs customarily have their own edged weapon makers with special tricks of the trade. A sandpaper grip or a cloth handle strap will help control the weapon when it gets bloody. Rust sometimes is deliberately used to complicate injuries. Pointed weapons can easily be converted into spears with rolled up newspapers which have been soaked and dried to a hardened shaft. One correctional facility where a sergeant was killed reported 70 spear attacks on officers in a single year. Outside prison, there are those with martial arts training who prefer the edged instrument over other weapons because of its silence. It never jams, never has to be reloaded, and it doesn't leave a ballistic residue. Plus, they understand that even for violent crimes, our liberal courts tend to be more lenient with knife offenders than with criminals who use guns. Unfortunately, a suspect's type may not always be obvious to you as a warning sign. Especially when nothing seems out of the ordinary and when low light level or fast action make it difficult to see his weapon. These problems, of course, are multiplied when an edged weapon offender has backup. To overcome these suspect advantages, it is crucial that you read danger cues in behavior and body language. Block in the alley. What's the problem? Certain movements leave little doubt about intent. Ah! This represents imminent danger for sure. But many officers who become knife victims are so startled by a sudden charge that they freeze up. 
Sometimes you see an offender move to the mains. Distance is your best defense unless adequate cover is available. Once you see the attacker, create a reactionary gap by enforcing voice commands or by using the unexpected or consider full-scale disengagement. Please. Hit as hard as you can to cause a dysfunction of the extremity and force a release of the weapon. And quickly follow through with repeat strikes or physical control. Or get back and get your gun out. Many targets are vulnerable to this technique. From the femoral artery in the groin to the arms, ribs, chest, the neck, and back. A very skilled knife fighter might use the reverse ice pick grip. Here the cutting edge is held to the outside for an effective forehand slash, which is followed by backhand stabs. The crucial tactic for your buying time to assess a suspect and to protect yourself against an edged weapon you don't immediately see is this, this table fork. Time is court and session till today. Officers who fall victim to edged weapons usually commit at least one critical error, like misreading what could be a weapon or misjudging the subject. Try it again this time. Why don't you leave the pens in the tray before you come through? Sure. Sometimes it's the unlikely individual who has the best chance of harming you. Tragically, it's been estimated that one out of every four edged weapon attacks could be prevented if updated intelligence information were known. Squad 21 to the dispatcher. 10-7 with a violator, 41 southbound. It's a silver 78 Chevy two-door. California plates, King, Ida, Lincoln, Mary, Edward. Uh, one white male occupant. 10-4 squad, 21. In most situations, your threat assessment will have to begin by you identifying the suspect's potential for violence. Most civilians would never threaten you with an edged weapon. Even those who carry concealed knives generally do so to protect themselves against criminals. Squad 21. Squad 21, go ahead. Squad 21, be advised there's a possible local open warrant for DWI on that subject. The flight list to a Ron Thomas of Los Angeles. The warrant is on that subject. 10-4. But some will turn against you, if frightened or if provoked. Many civilians do live on the fringe of the knife culture. They're influenced by movies that glorify the blade. Heroes who build confidence in fighting back against the bad guy. Shut your engine off! What the fuck do you want? I want to see your driver's license. What for? I said I'm only a block from home. Why don't you let me go? Look, I just want to see your driver's license. Oh, Christ. I got it here somewhere. It's in the car, I'll get it. Most people have drawn inner boundaries they don't want crossed. And sometimes, the blade is there to guard those boundaries. Here's my license. Why don't you come and get it? Adding to this country's heritage of edged weapons, as well as a growing knife culture in Canada, are new waves of immigrants from knife culture countries. In the Middle East, when you can control the reactionary gap, you create time by creating distance. Time to compute your force options and time to communicate with the potential attacker. Here's my license. Why don't you come get it? Drop the knife. Fuck you. I said, drop the knife. Oh, okay, just kidding. Sorry. Now back away. Turn away from me. When you can communicate, Try to deliver your commands from behind cover and listen for cues to the suspect's psychology. Open 
Officer, he's the one that stole the meat. Hold it. Get away from the truck. What do you got under your coat? Some meat, man. Put the meat on the truck. Step away from the truck towards me. I'm going to need some identification. Here's your ID right here. 835, give me a backup, man, with a knife, blackmail. Tate's food, 27 and national. Throw down the knife. Hey, man, I ain't throwing this knife down. This is special to me, man. Throw down the knife. Nah, nah, this knife cost me a bunch of money, man. 350 bucks. It's a Vietnam commemorative knife. All right, then just place the knife down slowly. It won't get scratched. Slowly place the knife down. All right, I'll do that. I'll mess up my knife. Step away from the knife towards the auto. In my mind, I'm never going to die in no ghetto. Absolutely never. If a man turns around and punches me in the head, the fight's on. If he cuts me, the fight's on. If I'm shot, the fight is on. I'm not losing no fight to no scumbag out there in no ghetto. Period. That's it. No son of a bitch out there is going to get me. The only way he gets me is cut my head off, and I mean that. I'll fight you till I got a breath left in me. I don't think any of those animals in that street can beat me. I've gone that way for 18 years of street service, street duty, and that's the way I'm going to keep on going. You don't lose the fight. <laughs>